Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the last time this great Jamaica Labour Party won consecutive general elections in this country was between 1962 to 1972. This party is an institution of greatness. Our leader and founder, Sir Alexander Bustamante, built this party from the bowels of the working class people of Jamaica. This party have grown and have grown to the extent that every time the country needs a government to respond to crisis, the Jamaican people turn to the Jamaica Labour Party. It is my distinct pleasure this evening to bring now to address the country on the evening of this massive endorsement of his leadership of Jamaica the Member of Parliament for the constituency of West Central St. Andrew, leader of the great Jamaica Labour Party, and Prime Minister-elect, the most honorable Andrew Michael Olness. Thank you, thank you everyone, thank you. Thank you, Desmond. Good evening, Jamaica. First, let me say thanks to the Almighty for sparing us and for guarding us with his mighty hand. We went into an election with the backdrop of a pandemic. And you will notice that I'm speaking to you while still wearing my mask as a symbol that we are still under serious threat of the pandemic. By and large, I think most Jamaicans tried to abide by the protocols. I want to give the assurance to Jamaicans tonight that your government will continue its effective management of the COVID pandemic to keep you safe and to protect your livelihoods. No doubt we are entering into a new phase of the pandemic, an inevitable phase of the pandemic, and that will require uh, a new strategy of management. But whatever we do, you can rest assured that we will keep you safe, we will keep our frontline workers safe, we will make the necessary allocations in our budget so that you can be cushioned and cope with the economic fallout that accompanies the pandemic. Tonight, the victor is the people of Jamaica. You came out in your hundreds of thousands and you participated in the solemn process of democracy. You voted. You expressed yourself through the ballot. There is indeed cause for celebration, but there is also, I would believe, significant cause for consideration. Uh, there are many Jamaicans who did not participate. Uh, there are many Jamaicans who, for fear of the virus, decided not to come to the polls. But there are also many Jamaicans who, for other reasons, apathy, frustration with the process, decided not to participate. So even though we have this overwhelming majority and the people have given us the mandate 
that we require. We are still considerate of those Jamaicans who still look on with uh, uh, some suspicion, some concern, some apathy on the political process. So we are very cautious in our approach to receiving this overwhelming majority. It must never be that the government that emerges from this victory takes on any characteristics of arrogance, of inhumility. It must never be that the government that emerges from this victory takes the people for granted in any way. As I stand here tonight, I am obviously happy to have won, but I want to assure all of you that I do carry this burden with great consideration of the expectations of not those, just those who elected us, but those who are looking on us for future decision as to whether or not they will participate in the process. And I want to say to those persons who didn't participate this time, that we, as a new government, with an, uh, a mandate that is indisputable, that we will conduct ourselves in a way that will make you proud as well and make you want to participate the next time around. I raise this in my acceptance I don't call this a, a victory speech. Because with such a large mandate, it brings a whole new dynamic as to how we manage government. In our last government, the narrative of corruption dogged us. And it is not something that we can hide away from. And I want to be clear, because there are many persons who will now be assuming state authority who may not have the understanding as to how that authority should be used, they will know clearly that this government does not stand for corruption. We have, as a country, managed to come to consensus on fiscal matters, on monetary policy. There is an evolving consensus on crime and violence, national security. We have a consensus developing around growth policy. But there must now be a clear consensus, strong position on anti-corruption. The mandate is also a victory for conscientious and thoughtful policy. Uh, we saw manifestos being presented that were poles apart in terms of their content and structure. The manifesto that won is the manifesto that was realistic, the manifesto that was doable. And what it says to me is that the Jamaican politics, the Jamaican people are maturing in their outlook. They understand that populist policies can have a destructive impact on the national good. So in that regard, Jamaica has won. We have had a very uh, by and large, uh, a peaceful election, an election that can be emulated by other countries. And we must all cherish our democracy. I want to acknowledge the PNP and Dr. Peter Phillips. Uh, tonight, I received a call from Dr. Phillips uh, conceding and congratulating. And I thought that was very sportsmanlike. 
and very dignified and it, and really reflects well on our politics and i too obviously commended him on a putting up a good fight um as i said today in an interview politics can be like gladiator sport but after it is finished we must all try to be good sportsmen and sportswomen and for good reason the task ahead of us is not just for the Jamaica Labour Party. The task ahead of us is for all of us, including the PNP. And so tonight I also appeal to PNP supporters. Do not feel dejected. Join us in celebrating Jamaica's victory. you will have a very important role to play in Jamaica's stronger recovery. And I am clear that there should not be any victimization, any retribution, any malice in how we move forward as a government. We must embrace everyone. We need everyone on board for Jamaica to recover stronger. As I close, I want to thank my family, my wife, Juliet, who is still in our constituency. I, I brought my younger son with me for him to get some insights into politics. I want to thank the campaign team. Um, you would have heard from Babsy and from Desmond and Nigel. Um, but I want to have a, a special commendation for Kamina. Kamina. I want to thank the officers of the party, chairman, deputy chairman, and our very hardworking general secretary and his deputy general secretaries, and all who worked and participated. I put a word of prayer out for our deputy campaign chairman, Rudyard Spencer, who is in hospital at this moment. And I want to welcome our newly elected candidates. And for those who were not um, successful at the polls, to say that your effort contributed to the victory and you are a part of the winning team. There were some um, unfortunate events today, uh, which one of them I will acknowledge is the um, sudden death of a voter at the polls. I um, extend my sympathies to her family. But as I close, I give the assurance that with this large margin, this solid mandate, that we will be responsible. We will be responsible with the power that you have given to us. We will continue our good policies. We will keep Jamaica on the path to prosperity. We will usher in an era of stability on which we will grow, we will usher in an era where Jamaica can fulfill its true destiny. May God bless you. And Prime Minister of Jamaica, the most honorable Andrew Holness. In closing, let me say to the many supporters of the party, those who are watching and listening to us, that we are the party of choice. And let us ensure that in whatever we do, we remember the words of our party leader. Let us be dignified 
and extend a hand of fellowship and love to our brothers and sisters. We close with the playing of the party's anthem. <laughs> 